Where we're coming from, who are we designing for? So uh, when it comes to the digital space, we are designing for disabilities that affect the eyes, ears, hands, and brain. And there's an icon associated with each of those. So let's get into eyes. That's the next slide. Okay, so disabilities that affect the eyes. Who are those folks? These, these are disabilities, uh, people who are blind or have low vision, all right? And those are not the same people, right? Somebody who is blind identifies as not seeing anything, whereas somebody who has low vision identifies as maybe having um, uh, peripheral vision or central vision, right? So they can actually read or see things with enlargement or change of color contrast uh, and things like that. Uh, so assistive technology, um, screen magnifiers might be something that a person with low vision uses. Screen readers is a technology that I use and it's a synthesized voice that reads what is on the screen. Uh, braille displays, similarly to screen readers, instead of hearing the information, there's actually a device uh, that has these pins that go up and down and represent braille in real time. And I can connect that to my computer, my phone and use my devices using a braille display. So when you're designing for people who are uh, blind or have low vision, here's some recommendations. So making your visual design more clear and easy to read, and that is done through good color contrast, using accessible fonts, uh, spacing, and things of that nature. Um, so in your digital design, making sure that uh, images are described through all text and things like that, making sure that under the hood, the formatting of your digital product matches what it actually looks like. Um, and uh, keyboard access, making sure that everything that you can click on can be accessed by the keyboard using the tab key and then spacebar or enter to activate. Okay, so ears, uh, who is that? That's folks who are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, and they might be using hearing aids, right? Or they might be uh, using cochlear implants or they might not be using anything at all, right? Um, so we need to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, the captions are available and hearing aids uh, and uh, that, that kind of stuff uh, is available. Um, but our recommendations for designing for folks who, uh, who are deaf or hard of hearing, uh, captions for audio or video content, right? Writing in plain language, because some folks uh, who are deaf, American Sign Language is their first language, and the grammar is completely different from actual English. Uh, videos in American Sign Language as well. Um, and then just all around, if there are audio cues, they need to have some kind of visual cue as well. Okay, so disabilities that affect the hands. So these are folks who might be able to see, they might be able to hear, but are unable to use a mouse for some reason. Uh, they might use, um, uh, so be people who might use you know, a keyboard instead of a mouse. They might use a trackball mouse, or they might use switch controls, sip and puff devices, or voice controls, right? Uh, so it's important that when we're designing uh, to include that group by making sure that everything has keyboard access, because what a lot of assistive technologies do is simulate what a keyboard does. Move forward to the next item, activated or uh, or not, right? Um, accessibility labels as well. Um, so this is uh, very good for voice control. Um, you may know that uh, iOS and Mac now have complete voice control. And if your website uh, has an accessibility label, let's say for a link that does not match what the visual label for that link is, folks are gonna have trouble using voice control to actually get to that link and activate it. So it's important that you add accessibility labels to all of your form fields, links, anything that you can interact with and that it matches what you're visually seeing. 
brain, uh, disabilities that affect the brain. So this could be people with learning disabilities, uh, developmental disabilities, cognitive or intellectual disabilities. Um, some uh, assistive technologies that they might use is tools like Grammarly, Hemingway Reader. Uh, these are tools that help with grammar and uh, spelling and just reading in general. Readability is another one. Um, and so recommendations for this group is to make, always make your co content clear and have detailed instructions. Um, it's never a bad idea to state the obvious. It's never a bad idea to be Captain Obvious. Not all of us know what you know and vice versa. So using plain language goes a long way. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but basically, you know, speaking clearly, shorter sentences, um, and using more common words. 